Hello, this is Crystal Racing here, and before I start this video, I would like to announce that I have a brand new uh, football YouTube channel named Siren Football. The link will be in the description below, so please subscribe as soon as possible. Or if you want to, I'm not forcing you to do anything. But anyway, on to the video. Who have been the worst and best drivers this season in Formula 1 2021? I'm going to start from the bottom to the top. Starting off with the legend himself, the driving genius himself, Nikita Ma Marzipan. I mean, Mazepin. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I will get. I have marked every driver, every performance they've produced so far. A mark out of ten, and his average score puts him down in last place with a disappointing four point three three. His highest scores were six at. Um, Imola and of course Monaco where well I gave him six for finishing the race at Imola despite spending a few times and I thought well that's pretty good for you and then of course I gave him six at Monaco for beating Schumacher but what can I say really you know when you listen to him talk on the radio he you know his engineer tells him to do something quite simple like change a switch press this button and he doesn't understand and he doesn't really seem to have the mental capacity to be able to do these things and be able to drive the car quickly through and if you have noticed it's quite like it was yeah on average it's half a second slower in qualifying than Mick his race pace he's often lapping about at least a second a lap slower than Mick so he deservedly finishes last 19th place it is Yuki Sonoda Average score of 5.5. I gave him 9 out of 10 for his performance at Bahrain. Outstanding debut. Where he overtook Lance Stroll in the last lap to, scrap to uh, grab 2 points. I gave him 8 out of 10 for his performance at Baku. Where I think he finished 8th. Yeah, pick or 7th. Can't remember. But the 4 races in between though were horribly poor. Like about 3, ten, three to, to 5 tenths slower than Gasly. A lot of complaining on the radio, a lot of frustration, you know. I think he just needs to just do his thing and ignore what Gasly's doing because Gasly is bang on form right now. 18th place, it is Nicholas Latifi, 5.92 out of 10. Um, highest score so far, 7.5 for his performance at Monaco, where he did alright. Um, I gave him 3 out of 10 for crashing out on the first lap at Imola where stupidly he decided to cut cross on Massa Pin. Just stupid. I had to give him 3 out of 10. Just completely dumb. Um, but having said that though, I did give him 7 out of 10 for his race at Spain and 7 out of 10 for his performance at Baku. So he is actually quite consistent but he really needs to do something outstanding. If he really wants to get more than a 7 at this point. And he still has not out-qualified George Russell in their time together. Which is going to be is increasingly worrying. 17th place, Valtteri Bottas. Average score of just 6.00. He got an 8 for his performance at Bahrain. Another 8 for his race at Portugal. And of course his performance at Monaco. Where he was so unlucky not to get a podium. Because of the, the wheel not failure. I gave him 3 out of 10 for his, just his speed alone at Imola. I mean, the incident itself between him and Russell was not his fault, but his pace prior to that was just pathetic. 3 out of 10, like miles behind Lewis Hamilton in the way. And I gave him 2 out of 10 for his um, that so-called performance at Baku, where, you know, before the race, yeah, he got his airplane was delayed and he was stuck in the airport in Helsinki, but... You know, whilst yes, he was able to arrive in Baku, it seemed to be he left his mind was still stuck in Helsinki, though. Yeah, physically he was there in person to drive the car, but frankly, I mean, seeing that one uh, restart where you go over and talk by sights, Ricardo, Alonso, Raikkonen, and Giovinazzi, I mean, he deserves to be down in 17th. 16th place, Daniel Ricardo. Man, he has been well and truly destroyed so far by Lando Norris. This is massive alarm bells. I gave him 9 out of 10 for his performance at Spain. The only time he's beaten Norris so far. I gave him about 8 out of 10 at Bahrain. But, well, I mean, I know he out-qualified Norris. But I suppose it was first race at McLaren. So I thought it would be nice to him. 7 out of 10 for his races at 
Portugal enabler. I gave him 3 out of 10 for what he did at Monaco where he was stuck behind Kimi the whole race because his qualifying was so bad. And I gave him 6 out of 10 for his race at Bacacus. Norris was just simply better than him again. 15th place Mick Schumacher. Average score of 7.08 out of 10. 7.08. For those of you wondering, sorry. And um, Ricardo, his average score is 6.67. If I didn't mention it, um, back to Mick Schumacher, gave him 9 9 out of 10 for his performance at Bahrain, an 8 at Imola, an 8.5 at Portugal because of his overtake on the TV, another 8 for his performance at Spain. However, I gave him a 4 4 out of 10 for his performance at Monaco and a 5 for his race at Baku because in the past two races I've found him to be a bit poor. Yeah, um... Okay, he got a he-, he got back in front of Mazepin for the uh, on the last lap at Baku, and because of his performance, his his uh, finish of thirteenth, he's managed to drag horse into ninth place ahead of Williams, which is a very impressive, which is quite good for Mick. But a lot of that is more down to Williams completely messing up. You know, um, apparently um, Mick getting a radio call message to the TV model, up, meaning that. The TV picked up a 10 second penalty and then of course Russell was unable to take the restart because of some stupid problem. I've got to say, um, I'm not sure whether Mick has been, is one of the best young drivers at the moment, but he has done well with the level of machinery he's got, so I'll leave it at that. 14th place, it's Fernando Alonso, 7.17 out of 10. Alonso has struggled a lot against Ocon so far this season, being out qualified and being out raced a lot. I gave him 9 out, 9 out of 10 for his impressive qualified performance at Bahrain and the way he fought against Kimi and Vettel in the, in the race before he was forced to retire with a brake dock issue because of a plastic bag was stuck in there. Um, 7 out of 10 for his day at Imola scoring a point, 8 out of 10 for his performance at Portugal where he Oh, got from 17th and finished 8th. Very, very good drive, I may say. But I gave him 5 out of 10 for his performance at his home race at Spain and 5 for his performance at Monaco. Two very poor races, I've got to say. But I gave him 9 out of 10, as particularly for that restart at Baku. So, yeah, not a bad return, but could be better. 13th place, Sebastian Vettel, 7.3, 3 out of 10. Uh, gave him 4 out of 10 at ball ring for that stupid collision with Ocon. 7 at Imola because of all the bad luck he had. 6 out of 10 for his day at Portugal. Just got out raced by Lance Stroll. 7 at Spain. But of course I've given him 10 out of 10. And driving a day for both of his performances at Monaco and Baku. At, he's, he's definitely getting back to his uh, best possible top form. And I'm very happy to see that. Good for you Vessel. And he looks so much happier than the team involved with Aston Martin where, you know, the team now revolves around him again. There's no more team politics like there was at Ferrari. And, you know, with Lance Stroll as a teammate, he's surely now going to be back to being a number one again. 12th place, it is Kimi Raikkonen. Um, I know he's only scored one point and he has struggled in qualifying against Joe Venazzi, but nonetheless, his race pace is still as good as ever. Now, I did give him 3 out of 10 for what he did at the start at Portugal, where he ran into the back of Joe Venazzi and ended his race there and then, just 3 out of 10. Um, but apart from that, I have gave him 7 out of 10 for his race at Monaco, and 8 for his performance at Baku, where he scored a point, 8.5 for his race at Bahrain, and a pair of 9s for his race at Imola, and of course, the, his race at Spain, where of course he was... He had points taken off him at Imola due to, of course, a restart infringement, which I still do not understand. 11th place, it is also, it is Sergio Perez, who also scores 7.42 out of 10. Same score as Kimi, but, you know, I decided who's more worthy of being placed higher, and I've got to say Perez. He got 9 out of 10 for his race at Bahrain, a pair of fives for his performance at Spain and Imola, where I thought he was very poor in those races. 8 out of 10 for his performance at Portugal, where um, qualifying name down, but his race pace was good. 8 out point five out of 10 at Monaco, where qualified, where his race pace once again was far better in his qualifying. You know, this is the thing with Perez. 
if he knew how to qualify better, he'd be a, a he'd be right up there causing all sorts of problems, and he would actually be a genuine championship contender. You know, yeah, of course he won last time out at Baku, picking up his first win for the Red Bull team. I gave him 9 out, nine out of 10 because ultimately, really, Verstappen was the better driver. But, of course, bad luck ruined his race. But, of course, I, I expect Perez to rise up my rankings table as the season goes on once he really gets comfortable at the team. 10th place it is Carlos Sainz, 7.58 out of 10. Good start for Ferrari. A lot of 7s and 8s for him. He, I gave him 9 out of 10 for his performance at Monaco where he finished second. But I did only give him 6.5 for his race at Baku where, you know, that mistake cost him a lot of points. And he only finished down in 9. Very poor result. But having said that though, he has been very consistent as usual. But of course, Leclerc is clearly the faster driver in qualifying. And does have a slight edge in the races as well. Ninth place, Lewis Hamilton, 7.67 out of 10. There are two other drivers ahead of him with the same score, but Lewis Hamilton has made at least three big errors this season. He mocked up at Imola, where I gave him 8 out of 10. He completely messed up Monaco, where I gave him 4 out of 10. And then, of course, he made that mistake at Baku at the restart, where I gave him 5 out of 10. A bottom at places like Bahrain and... Um, Portugal, I gave him 10 out of 10 for winning. 9 out of 10 for winning at Spain, where, of course, you know, he was beaten the first quarter by Max Verstappen. And I've got to say, this championship fight between Hamilton and Verstappen is going to be a good one. I really do hope it goes down to the wire. And I really do hope there's no FIA decisions that get in the way of it. 8th place, George Russell, also 7.67 out of 10. I gave him a 5 out of 10 for his performance at Imola, mostly due to the fact he crashed into Bottas. I thought that was his fault because he was the one who got a wheel on the grass when it was wet, which really was a bad rookie error. Apart from that, though, he's had um, two eights, two nines, and a 7 out of 10 for his race at Baku. I don't really know how to judge George Russell, but I guess if he was in e if everyone was in equal cause, he definitely would be a top 10 driver. Pierre Gasly, 7.67 out of 10. He's only down, he's only, he's down in 7th place, literally because I gave him 3 out of 10 for his uh, first lap incident at Bahrain which, with Ricardo, which uh, costed, him a lot, costed him a lot of points and made, made that he finished down all the way down in 17th place. But apart from that, Pierre Gasly has been absolutely fantastic and that guy deserves a top car now. He is a vastly improved driver from what he was at the start of 2019. And I am really now becoming more of a fan of him. And some of the performances he has been putting on, especially in qualifying, are beginning to become increasingly reminiscent of Kimi Raikkonen's speed at McLaren all the way back in the mid-2000s. Sixth place, Lance Stroll. 7.75 out of 10. Lance Stroll continues his strong form that he showed from 2020. Um, I gave him 5 out of 10 for his performance at Portugal. I think, yeah, I think, I don't know, both people and Vettel were not very good, but as it was, it was just a subdued performance from both drivers, but um, looking at the scores, though, I have given him two eights and then three times. I've also given him 8.5 out of 10 for his performance at Bahrain, Imola, and Spain, where I thought he was very, very, very good, and he dominated Sebastian Vettel in the races and qualifying. And even though, yeah, he got beat at Monaco and Baku by Vettel, I still thought he was very good, you know, he made the pit, str he made the, pit str uh, the strategy work at Monaco, where he jumped ahead a few, co uh, a lot of cars and finished eighth on what is his weakest track on the calendar and then of course at Baku he was running in fourth place before his tyre blew. I mean yeah Stroll could improve a little bit but he is it this is this this guy has improved massively in the past two years and I could not be happier. You know, I used to slag him off slow march but he really is now a trans a changed person and a transformed driver and I'm happy to see it. Fifth place, and I know this might seem a bit too high for him, but it's Antonio Giovinazzi, 7.92 out of 10. Um, I gave him a two 7 out of 10s for his performance at Spain and Baku, where 
he well he was unlucky to miss out on points in both races and of course at Spain there was that pit stop calamity where of course the tyre that came out turned out to be punctured which was stupid but nonetheless he, he did try his hardest to you know fight back but he was far too far behind when once he came out of the pits and the other races Bahrain and Imola he was very strong 8 out of 10 he looked like he was going to score points at Imola before of course he had a um, technical issue which forced him to pit and dropped him down the order um, I gave him 8.5 out of 10 for scoring a point at Monaco very good performance all weekend qualifying in the top 10 very, very good. Gave him 9 out of 10 for his performance at Portugal, where he beat both Aston Martins and finished 12th. And 7 out and uh, yeah. And I gave him 7 out of 10 for his performance at Baku, because, yeah, he messed up in qualifying, but he did well to finish behind Kimi in the race. 4th place, Esteban Ocon. 8.33 out of 10. Um, very got to be by far one of the most impressive drivers of the season he has dominated Alonso both in the races and in qualifying uh, 2 8 out of 10 for his performances at Bahrain at Imola where of course and then of course 9 out of Port Portugal 10 out of 10 at, at Spain yeah totally destroyed Alonso there 9 out of 10 at Monaco once again got had the beating of Fernando Although he did get six though at Baku, but of course that was because his engine blew early on, and he got out qualified by Alonso. But so far, but apart from that, he's been absolutely fantastic, and he has well and truly risen above the mediocre performances he produced last year when he was Ricardo's teammate. Third place in his Charles Leclerc, eight point four two out of ten. Um, I gave him 5 out of 10 for crashing out and qualifying at Monaco and not which I think caused his gearbox issue which meant he couldn't stop but apart from that I gave him 8.5 out of 10 for his performance at Baku where yeah he qualified Paul but he dropped down the order and ended up 4th so that was a little bit I mean yeah I know he did try to overtake Gasly towards the end but he just couldn't quite do it despite the fact that Gasly was the one having an engine issue um, he got three straight nines at uh, Bahrain, Imola and Portugal and a 10 out of 10 for his performance at Spain. You know, every time he's qualified near the front, he's always been able to jump ahead of Bottas. You know, yeah, I think Leclerc needs to calm down a bit and stop making so many errors. But if it wasn't for his uh, full aggression style of driving... He would not be the driver he, he is. And I've got to say it. He deserves to be rated as his third best driver. Second place. Very, very, very impressive. 8.92 out of 10 for Lando Norris. me, Wow. He has, apart from speed, he has been at very consistent. He has scored points in all six races. He is the only driver to have scored points in all six races so far. I don't know what to say. He has just totally destroyed Ricardo. With the exception of Spain, he has just had his number all year round. And of course, you know, getting the podium at Imola and of course the podium at Monaco. He is a transformed driver. There is, I, I just don't know what, uh, there is no, I can't really criticise him to be honest. There's just nothing I can criticise him anymore. He just looks... He actually looks like a future world champion in the making, whilst Ricardo looks like the one who's who's on the way down. If you told me at the start of the season Norris would be destroying Ricardo, I will have laughed at you, but this is where we are. And my driver of the season so far is Max Verstappen, 9.25 out of 10. Um, surprisingly enough, though, despite getting, being my best driver, he has not actually received a single 10 out of 10 for any of his performances so far this season. And a lot of that is due to the fact that he's only scored one pole position so far this year. Did he get Paul at Baku? I, oh, God, my memory's... No, that was a clue. Got Paul at Baku, I beg your pardon. But, yeah, um, only one pole position so far for Red Bull at Bahrain. Um, hence why he, I still can't give him a full 10 out of 10 because, of course, he got beat by Hamilton at Bahrain, but he got 9.5 for winning at Imola, 8.5 for finishing... What was it? Was it second or third at Portugal? Can't remember. But he got 9 out of 10 for Spain, where, of course, he lost the race to Hamilton. 9.5 for his win at Monaco. And 9.5 for the for what should have been a win at Baku. If it 
Of course, if it wasn't for that tyre failure, he would have won the race and Paul would be leading the championship by four po uh, 15 points over Hamilton. But because the tyre blew, it means he only stays four points ahead. And with, you know, Mercedes and Hamilton improving in the second half of the season and with Max Verstappen and Red Bull known for improving in the second half of championship years as well it's going to be a tasty fight if you enjoyed this video please like subscribe to crystal racing and i'll see you again next time